Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I am streaming to you live from beautiful Budapest in Central Europe, capital city of Hungary. I hope everybody has had a fantastic weekend and is off to a great start this week. Hi Puza, Grung, Awaz, nice to see a member in class on time. Hi Happy Singh, good to see a regular student, Massimo, thank you for joining the class. Violet Newman, all right, students. In this class, we are looking at speaking part one of the IELTS exam. Of course, the speaking interview is the same for the general and the academic part of the test. Uh, these materials, as usual, are coming from aehelp.com for academic IELTS help, please check us out there. And for the general version of the exam, join our premium package at gieltshelp.com. On both of these websites, we have lots and lots of great materials for you, including six original practice exams. We're adding four more this year, over 100 hours of video lessons, and a fully interactive course for your phone, tablet, PC. The aehelp.com website looks like this. You can click that big red button to join the premium package or click that green button to try it for free. At gieltshelp.com, you will see the same layout with a green background. Click that big red button to join our premium package there. All right, everyone. If you haven't done so yet, uh, make sure to download our apps, Academic IELTS Help and General IELTS Help from your Google Play and Apple App Stores. Who's us asking, why do I always wear a shirt? Well, try to be presentable for class. Pooza, thanks for that question. Uh, a common question students actually ask about um, the IELTS speaking section is, what should I wear for my speaking interview? And I always tell students that you should wear semi-formal clothing for your speaking interview. So don't go with a t-shirt and jeans if possible. And you don't need to get dressed up. So you don't need to wear um, a tie and a, or a dress or anything like that. Uh, just kind of the way I'm dressed is okay for the speaking interview. So maybe a dress shirt but no tie so I can breathe. I don't feel so... Um, constricted, nervous, okay? So just semi-formal, semi-formal. Be comfortable, be presentable, okay? So uh, look respectful, but also feel comfortable. It's very important, all right? Okay, uh, so students, uh, if you have questions, like the one I just mentioned, um, you can always ask me, and send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com if you have questions about our products, our websites, our apps, or about the IELTS exam, just send me an email and we will answer. Um, Elena is asking, can I wear a sweater? Yeah, absolutely, Elena. Just make sure the sweater is kind of semi-formal. So don't wear like a casual sports sweater. If you wear a sweater, wear something that's semi-formal, okay? And comfortable. It's important that you're comfortable. Students, you can get our exam books from Amazon. You can search for AE Helps Academic IELTS or G Helps General IELTS, and then you can um, order our books in paperback or electronic version. Live IELTS classes, these stream classes, I do them every week just about, uh, and they are from 13.30 for members and 15 o'clock for all chat, according to Central European time. Our upcoming schedule today, again, speaking part one. Tomorrow, I will host a task one academic writing class for members. Everybody is welcome to watch. And then that will be followed by a listening uh, class tomorrow. So the rest of the schedule is on the YouTube community board. You can check it out there. All right, Thakur Ashik is asking, how can I get six bands in IELTS? Thakur Ashik, to get band six in IELTS exam, you have to be a fluent user of English. 
which means that you have to be able to speak and write fairly fluently and you need to be able to understand a typical conversation or information in reading. That's how you get a band six. All right. Shamsuddin is asking, uh, what kind of a hairstyle should we have for the speaking interview? It doesn't matter. Just have a clean cut hair. Okay, so shave if you're a man, have clean cut hair, look presentable. Okay, students, uh, let's get into this. So the speaking section, again, it's a 12 to 15 minute interview for all IELTS students, computer based, paper based, academic, general. The speaking section is the same. It's always face to face with usually a native English speaking uh, person. If they're not, they'll be very, very close. They'll be very professional. And you will be there for about 12 to 15 minutes. It will have three parts. Part one will be asking about you. Okay. Part two will be a cue card. Part three will be some more detailed questions. Today we're focusing on part one. Uh, when you go to your speaking interview, there are two really important uh, steps to remember before you go into the interview. Okay, so before you walk into your interview, two very important steps to save or gain band scores. Um, and I've said these before, so let's see if some of our regular students remember this. Uh, what should you keep in mind before you go into your speaking interview? So on the day of the interview, you're speaking English, you're using English only, and then you get called for your interview. Now, a few minutes before your interview, what should you remember? Kyber says, check your mental list, your mental checklist. Absolutely, Kyber. What does that mean? So, okay, so number one is go through your mental checklist. All right. Very, very good, Kyber. I'm, sh I'm glad that you got that. Okay. Does everybody know what that means? Go through your mental checklist five minutes before you walk into your speaking interview. It means that when you're getting ready for the exam, you should have a short list of four or five items to remind you of important points that you often forget when you are speaking. So this is going to be different for different students, but I'll give you an example. So let's imagine that you have a student named John and John is uh, getting ready for the IELTS exam. So they're practicing at home. They're practicing in school. They have a speaking partner that they're practicing with and they realize some important points like um, use the question in answers and reflect the grammar of questions. Okay. So maybe John is one of these students and we have seen many students like this before who forget to use the grammar of questions. Okay. So here's a question. This is just an example. Don't answer it. Have you ever had difficulties sleeping? Yes, I have had some difficulty sleeping. So here, John is reminding himself to use the question in the answer, as I just showed you. And the question here was present perfect. Have you ever had? So I'm answering in present perfect. So five minutes before my exam starts, I remind myself of these important points. And again, each of you will likely have some different points for this. So another point could be like, uh, use correlative conjunctions like, uh, both and, uh, whether or neither nor. Okay. So maybe you'll remind yourself that, Hey, 
I should use these correlative conjunctions because they're going to boost my score. So I'll re remember this in my mental checklist. Uh, maybe your point number three will be include smooth examples. Okay. Your point number four could be focus on the last two questions in the cue card. And maybe point number five will be speak loudly. Okay. So again, the important point here is when you're learning for your speaking, if there's some part of the speaking that you often forget to do, then add that to your mental checklist. When you go to your exam, look at that and remind yourself. Okay. Marasa is saying like connecting your answers. All right. So that's your first point. Okay, students, it's really, really, really useful. If you do this one trick, you can easily boost your band score by half or a full band. So have your mental checklist. You should have five, maybe six points. Don't have too many. Otherwise, it will be useless. Okay. And uh, again, go through it five minutes before your interview begins. Is that clear? Does everybody understand what I mean by have a mental checklist for areas of weakness or points to remind yourself uh, that you need to include in your speaking? Is this, is this clear? Does everybody clearly understand what I'm suggesting you to do by this? Okay, it can be very, very, very effective. Buy yourself some time for difficult questions. Okay. All right. It looks like it makes sense for most people. Um, what's the second point? So just before you walk in to your exam room for the speaking exam, what should you do? So number one, you're going through your mental checklist. That's great. You're reminding yourself of all of these important points. <clears throat> so what do you do next? What's, what's one more really important step for preparation right before your actual interview. So Gaming World says be confident. Yes, that's a big part of it, Gaming World. Marasa, talking English should happen all day before your speaking interview. Same thing for Dobbs. So speaking in English, that should be happening for 24 hours before your speaking interview all day, okay? Aisana Burr says, calm down, and that's also good. There we go. Puza says, think about the examiner as your father or your grandfather. I like to say grandfather because I think fathers and mothers can be a little bit more judgmental. So visualize your grandfather or grandmother, whichever one you feel most comfortable with. And imagine that the examiner is him or her. This means speak loud, be confident, give detailed and full answers, be respectful. Okay, so the logic here is that a lot of us are nervous when we have to speak to a stranger, especially when they're testing us. If we picture our grandfather, and I really mean picture, so close your eyes if you have to and see the face and the smile of your grandfather or your grandmother. Uh, grandpa, grandma, they're probably a little bit older. They might not hear so well, so you have to speak very loud and clear. You're going to be confident. Grandma, grandpa, they love you. They're not going to judge you, so that's great. Uh, give detailed information and full answers. Grandpa, grandma, they don't know about social media, maybe. They don't know about Facebook, they know about Twitter, Instagram. So if you're talking about these ideas, you need to explain them. What are they? It's a website where a person can post their pictures and ideas, share them with their friends in the world. So speak clearly, okay? And be respectful, okay? You can use slang, but just be respectful. All right. So keeping this in mind, point number one, point number two, again, you can easily save yourself at least half 
to a full band on your speaking interview. So I, I strongly suggest you do that. All right. Okay, everyone, let's get into it. So you walk in to your exam and you will be greeted by the examiner. And the examiner will begin with some standard questions. They have to ask you these questions. It's part of the protocol. It's part of the system. Okay. First question. What is your full name? Give me a full sentence answer for this. All right. So what is your full name? Practice this every time you practice your speaking, just so you can be fluent, natural, find it interesting. All right. Uh, Aisana, yes, that's right. So people who take the speaking at the same time do get a question from the same set of questions. It might not be the exact same questions, but it's from the same set of questions. Okay. Uh, Pedram says, my full name is Pedram Nagyeh. Please just call me by my nickname, Peds. I like it, Pedram. That's great. Okay, nice answer. Okay. I agree with Kyber, everybody. Please stay in English in the chat. There are people from all over the world, so be respectful to each other. Use the global language and the language of this channel, which is English. Um, Kyber says, my surname is Momand and my given name is Kyber, so please just call me Kyber. Kyber, that works great. Rodrigo Duarte says, my given name is Rodrigo and my family names are Marino Duarte. Please, you can call me Rodrigo. Good, Rodrigo, that works, okay? And I see that you're trying a different way there, which is good, okay? So again, students, you want to try different ways. Roshni says, my given name is Roshni and last name is Kunte. Please call me by my first name as per given in my passport, Roshni. Uh, yeah, Roshni, that's good. It's a passive voice, so it's as per given in my passport, as per given in my passport. Okay, it's a passive sentence. Uh, Mr. Beck says, my first name is Ferdavs Beck. My last name is Mirzaliev, but please call me Ferdavs. Okay, Ferdavs, I hope I pronounced your name more or less correctly. I do try as much as possible. Michael Fan says, my full name is Michael Fan. Please just call me by my given name, which is Michael. Very nice. Michael, I like how you use the adjective clause, which. So uh, even here in this question, as I showed you the other week, you can already prove to the examiner uh, that you can uh, use an adjective clause correctly. So you can say similar to what Michael's doing, and I'll write something close to that as well. So my complete name, okay, you can even paraphrase the word full with complete. My complete name is Jonathan uh, David Anders. But please uh, just call me by my nickname, which is Joe. Okay. So here I'm using an adjective clause. And showing the examiner that I can answer questions nice and fluently. So again, this is speaking students, so you can speak and repeat. So speak and repeat. Okay, try to repeat my intonation, my pronunciation. Uh, my English is uh, West Coast, North American from Victoria, Vancouver area. So the English that you hear me speak is very similar as what you would hear in San Francisco, San Diego, Los Angeles, uh, Anchorage, Alaska. It's all this kind of West Coast style of English. It's a very clear, clean form of English. So make sure to repeat what you hear. Uh, what is your full name? My complete 
name is Jonathan David Anders, but please just call me by my nickname, which is Joe. Okay. So that's a nice fluent way to give your name and show that you can use an adjective clause already, which is Joe. Okay. All right. And then comes the next question. These two questions are always adjacent. They're always one after the other. May I see your identification? Okay. May I see your identification? So again, have some kind of a natural, clear, confident answer to this question. Okay. Vishal Kaushik, another one of our members. Great to see so many new members in the chat. I'm loving that. Uh, so Vishal says, my full name is Vishal Kaushik. You can call me by my first name, Vishal. I love my name as it was the first gift which I got from my parents. Uh, it's nice, Vishal. I don't know if you need to say that uh, in the introduction. It's a bit awkward, but interesting anyway. Good introduction, though. All right. So Nimi Patel says, yes, you may. Okay. Uh, Nimi or Nimit uh, Patel 786. That's okay to say, yes, you may. Just be careful with your intonation when you say, yes, you may. In this case, you want to use a gentle intonation. So may I see your identification? Yes, you may. If you say it sternly, like, yes, you may, um, it is a little bit degrading. So you have to be careful with how you intonate the yes, you may. Okay. Uh, Omar Shafe says, yes, of course. Here it is. Have a look. That's a nice answer, Omar. Okay, good. Q Nguyen Than says, of course, here you are. Please have a look. It's also a very good answer. Uh, Abha Pende says, yeah, sure. This is my passport. Have a look. Good. Absolutely. Ped Ram says, certainly, here you are. Again, students, make sure you're repeating me as I'm saying these in the intonation. Okay. Daniel Shap Shapovalov says, most certainly, here's my passport, please have a look. Nice, I like the most certainly. It's a very nice natural uh, expression in English. So may I see your identification? Uh, yes, of course. Here is my passport. This is what I used to register for this exam. Okay. Uh, I do tell students that this is a nice phrase as well because it shows your examiner that you're paying attention and you've taken due diligence, which means that you've looked at how the exam works and you know that you need to bring the ID that you use to register. So again, students, repeat. Okay. Yes, of course. Here's my passport. This is what I use to register for this exam. Okay. Again, it's a type of clause here, what I use to register for the exam. So notice that only two questions have been asked so far. What is your full name? And may I see your identification? In both of my answers, I'm using uh, descriptive clauses, which is Joe, what I use to register for this exam. And that's good. Because that's showing your examiner that, hey, this is a person who's expressive, natural, and uses complex grammar even for simple situations to be clear. That's what you want to do. Okay. So, so far, so good. Okay. So far, so good. All right. And then a couple more icebreaker questions from your examiner uh, to get you feeling comfortable and fluent. What do you like to do in your spare time? Pedram, it's so far, so good. So far, so good. Okay. So far, so good um, is the expression. All right. Full sentence, students. Full sentence. What do you like to do in your spare time? For Dov's Nabyev says, in my leisure time, I love to play... Football with my sons, especially on Sundays and on Saturdays. I'm keen on swimming at the nearest pool to refresh my mind. Okay, for Dov's good, when joining those two ideas, so playing football 
and swimming, make sure to use some kind of a conjunction like as well or furthermore in addition. Okay, so something to link. All right. Charlie Sen says, well, in my spare time, I like to read books, watch movies. Like yesterday evening in my leisure time, I read 100 pages uh, from the book Conundrum, which is based on the life of uh, India's national hero. Okay, Charlie, good. Especially students in India, please be really careful with the word would. Okay, we don't use the word would in natural English in the US, Canada, UK, Australia as often as people do in India. I think maybe in India people are using would because they want to be very polite, but it's kind of awkward when it's overused. So Charlie, in my spare time, I like to read books, not I would like to read books because that means you don't have spare time and you're not actually reading books. So careful students, especially students in India, careful with the overuse of would. I have definitely taken points from students for using would incorrectly too often. Okay, so be more affirmative. All right, uh, Taylor Reese. Well, as both a student and a freelancer, I don't get much free time. However, whenever I can, I volunteer at the local community center to uh, teach some design and photography. That's really nice, Taylor Reese. Okay, so you do some volunteering. Uh, Taylor, whenever is one word. Whenever, push them together, one word, okay? Kublir Singh says, well, in my leisure time, I just relax at home. Sometimes I go outside with my friends for a movie. After that, I finish my pending work. Then I help my mother for her kitchen uh, chores. Uh, Kublir, the first part is okay. The second half of your answer is awkward because it's no longer describing your free time. Students, do not go off topic, okay? So if I say, well, in my free time, I like to read books. And then after that, I do work on my computer uh, and then start cleaning my home. I've gone off topic because doing work on my computer and cleaning my home, it's not my free time. Okay. Nobody's asking me about that. So stick with the right topic. All right. Uh, so I'll suggest a, an answer here. And if I don't read or see your answer, students, don't threat. Just keep going. I will choose different answers from different students at different times, okay? So paraphrase your answers, try to use different words, okay? In my leisure time, which is usually in the evenings after 6 p.m. or on the weekends, I enjoy both going for walks in nature and catching the latest flicks on Netflix. <laughs> um, just the other day, I watched a movie called Two Popes in Yeah, it's okay. Let's just stop there. All right. So here is your band nine answer. All right. Uh, in my leisure time. So I'm paraphrasing spare time in my leisure time. And then I define that. What is my spare time? What is my leisure time? Which is usually in the evenings after 6 p.m. or on the weekends. So I tell the examiner that that's when I have leisure time. 6 p.m. is numbers, quantitative language. Use that. will help your band scores go up higher. Okay. I enjoy both going for walks in nature and catching the latest flicks on Netflix. Flicks means movies. That's why Netflix, net movies, Netflix. Just the other day, I watched a movie called Two Popes. So answer, explanation, example, Correlative conjunction, both and, okay. Um, adjective clause, which is. Quantitative language, 6 p.m. 
This is what the IELTS considers an expert user of the English language. And this is where they will give you that band nine score. You're answering the question exactly with details, right amount of information, complex grammar, lexical resource. It has all of the elements for a band nine. Okay. And the next question. Where do you go to relax? Where do you go to relax? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Where do you go to relax? Mechwish Ali says to relax after a hectic day at work, I go for a walk in the park. in the evening with my two other colleagues at a nearby ground, which is about a kilometer away from our office. Nice, Mechwish. Um, we don't say to relax myself, just to relax. It is generally understood that you're talking about yourself. Okay. Uh, Kapil AC says, as I mentioned, I go to the football field to clear my mind as well i sometimes go to the park and talk to some volunteers just for relaxation okay kapil not bad it's not a football court it's called a football field okay or if you're using british english it's called a football pitch pitch okay british english they say football pitch american english they say soccer field okay soccer field british english football pitch okay completely different in british and american english a fashion h brown says i'm taking a short vacation on weekends and going somewhere far away from the hectic city to build energy for the rest of the work week uh, in this way i can be relaxed and enjoy my life all right Afistian Brown, careful with your grammar. All right, you have some confusing grammar there. All right. Food Ranger says, yeah, to relax, I usually go to the park, which is near to my home, and I meet my friends, I listen to music, and I cook something uh, delicious to eat. Uh, just yesterday, I made some pasta and uh, chilled out on the couch, okay? Uh, Food Ranger, good. Uh, give me an example. Students, don't forget your smooth flowing examples, especially in part one, okay? So I'm just going to um, give you a little reminder of that at the top here. Okay, so um, remember to include some smooth flowing examples for your answers, okay? This improves fluency, coherence, grammar, and vocabulary scores, okay? Um, when I mean smooth flowing, so I, maybe some of you are wondering, what is Adrian saying when he says, not soothe flowing, but smooth flowing? Uh, what is Adrian saying when he says smooth flowing examples? That would be a good question. Smooth flowing example means that you're not using the words for example or for instance, okay? So don't say for example, for instance, that kind of scares the examiner that you're going to talk and talk and go off topic. So instead, use the words like just or like or the other day and then say your example, okay? So don't use the words, for example, or for instance, okay? These days, the examiners, when they hear a student use the word, for example, they'll often interrupt them and stop them because they fear that you're going to go off topic and talk too much, okay? So careful with that. Um, all right, so where do I go to relax? 
uh, there is a beautiful park about a kilometer from my flat where I like to go after a stressful day in order to unwind. There is a uh, pond in the center of the park with some benches where I like to sit and just zone out while listening to the sounds of nature. All right. So there is, again, your band nine answer. Um, repeat after me, students. Where do you go to relax? There's a beautiful park about a kilometer from my flat where I like to go after a stressful day in order to unwind. There's a pond in the center of the park with some benches where I like to sit and just zone out while listening to the sounds of nature. All right. It's natural. It contains complex grammar. Again, quantitative language about a kilometer from my flat. Again, the adjective clause where I like to go. Unwind, relax, unwind, they're synonyms, okay? Wind, unwind. Unwind is a synonym for relax. When you hear no, new vocabulary, write it down, okay? And then uh, zone out, okay? Zoning out means that you're kind of just staring into space. Anybody know what another word is for zone out in English? This is a quick little vocabulary test before we go to our next question. What's another way to say zone out in English? What's a synonym for that word? Okay. Vanessa, around and about are okay. They're, they're synonyms usually. So what's another way? to say zone out. There, there's a couple ways. Uh, Zakia, discern? No, discern has a different meaning than zone out. Discern means like um, deduce. Okay. Um, chill is uh, close uh, and Cheyenne, but it's not quite right. Gaze up, Aziz, is not correct. Mm, chill is not so much. Lost in my peace is not natural English, Nimit Patel. Forget all things, <laughs> Shere Khan, although that might be happening, that's not quite right. Okay. Space out is close. Doze off, uh, Tamo, means you're actually kind of sleeping or falling asleep. Um, another way to say zone out is... Space out, chow lo, is okay, but the other way we say it is daydream. Okay, it's actually one word, daydream. Okay, so zone out, daydream, space out is okay as well. It's close to zone out, but another very clear way to say it is daydream, daydream, okay, daydream. If you don't know that word, now you know it. Um, in the IELTS, make sure you do not daydream during the exam, okay? <laughs> That's my very important tip to you in the sit down and in the speaking part. Do not daydream. Stay focused. All right. On that note, let's go to the part one question. So your examiner here will say, all right, now I'm going to ask you some more questions. Uh, let's talk about sleep. Let's talk about sleep. And then the first question, how many hours do you sleep in a day? Okay. How many hours do you sleep in a day? Give me a nice full sentence answer for that question. Okay. So how many hours do you sleep in a day? Ferdov says, from Monday to Friday, I go to bed at 10 p.m. and uh, get up at 7 a.m. Uh, so I sleep about nine hours, Monday to Friday, right? 
Um, on the weekends, I get up at 9 a.m. Average sleep in a day about 9 to 11 hours. As today, I got up at 9 a.m. Wow, for doves, you love your sleep. That's great. I do too, to be honest with you. Um, Charlie says, well, I usually sleep around six to seven hours in a day uh, so that I can go to the office in the morning full of energy. Yeah. Uh, Charlie, instead of with full energy, full of energy. Okay. Luxmi Karki says, to be honest, I usually sleep 10 hours a day. I sleep a little bit long because it helps me to be fresh for the whole day. All right, Luxmi, that's not bad. It's good. Happy Singh says, um, as I belong to a younger age group, I sleep approximately eight hours a day, which supports me to unwind and helps my body be healthy. Yesterday night, I slept a little bit more as it was a holiday. Happy Singh, a couple of grammatical corrections there. Awaz Akhmedov says, I'm, spo I'm a sporty person. I'm a sporty person. Therefore, my body needs six to eight hours of sleep in a day for growth and to regenerate my muscles as well as recharge my batteries. Okay. Juan Pablo Avila says, I usually sleep seven hours per day and sometimes take a short nap for half an hour in the afternoon. On weekends, I sometimes sleep a bit more. Last Saturday, I woke up at 10 a.m., but it was okay because it was not a work day. Juan Pablo, really nice answer. Okay, so in a 24 hour period, I sleep anywhere from eight to 10 hours, depending on my mood and energy level. Usually, I get about seven to eight hours of sleep at night and take another hour nap in the afternoon. In fact, last night, I got nine hours of sleep in preparation for this exam. I'm pumped. Well, let's connect. So I'm pumped and full of energy. There we go. A nice full band nine response for us there. So repeat after me. How many hours do you sleep in a day? In a 24 hour period, I sleep anywhere from eight to 10 hours, depending on my mood and energy level. Usually I get about seven to eight hours of sleep at night and take another hour nap in the afternoon. In fact, last night I got nine hours of sleep in preparation for this exam. So I'm pumped and full of energy. Bada bing, bada boom, there you go. That would be your quantitative, expressive, answer with explanation and example. Okay. Now, next question. Where do you like to sleep? Location, right? Where do you like to sleep? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. So where do you like to sleep? So Pedram says, oh, I can sleep just in my own bed. And this is one of my most challenging habits because I can't fall asleep in a motel when I'm traveling to another city like last month. I had insomnia and couldn't sleep during my whole trip. Insomnia, Pedram, is when you can't sleep day after day. Okay. Alex Joseph says, to be honest, I like to sleep in a serene place, which is usually my own bedroom, though it is not possible all the time. Alex, good. Okay, nice answer. Um, for Doves, I'm fond of sleeping at home, especially in the master bedroom, even though I like to stay out 
for a night at my parents' house um, as I sleep in a bed which I got used to growing up. Okay, for dogs, you have to make that second part of the sentence a little bit clearer regarding your parents' house. Begzod Erkinov says, it is an axiomatic that I'm really clean, uh, keen on sleeping uh, in nature, especially on a mountain. There's, this is mainly because it enables a perfect mood as well as releasing stress. Okay, Begzod, not bad, not bad. Careful with your word choice and grammar. All right, let's see some more nice answers. Morasa says, Baraki, I love my bedroom where I sleep comfortably. Furthermore, no one disturbs me because my room is in the corner of the house, so it's nice and quiet. Okay, finish that idea, Morasa. Okay, Charlie Sen says, well, I like to sleep in my bed at my home. Uh, keep it simple, Charlie. Well, I like to sleep in my bed at home because it's comfortable. Besides, as you can see, I'm six feet tall and my bed is six and a half feet long, so I can stretch my legs comfortably. Nice, Charlie Sen. All right, that works. Maybe you have a firm bed as well if you're taller. All right. Kieun Kim says, the place I like to sleep is my parents' house where there's a queen size bed uh, available in my room, which is comfortable. I can roll around as much as I want. And it's uh, a safe place for me where nobody disturbs me. All right, uh, Q, nice. I would give it a little bit more description, but a great start nonetheless. Hikmatillo says, I usually sleep in the children's room because I adore my convenient bed with fluffy pillow and nobody disturbs me there. All right, great. Saki Base says, uh, in a work day, I take short sleeps five to six hours due to work, but on the weekends, I'm sleeping 10 to 12 hours to remove all of the week's stress. Saki, for the previous answer, that's not bad, okay? That's not bad, okay? All right, so, Keep it simple, all right? So where do you like to sleep? I like to, eh, let's remove the word like. I enjoy sleeping in my king size bed at home, not only because it is quite large and I move around a lot while sleeping, but also because it is a very comfortable bed and my flat is quiet. So I get a good night's rest. All right. Again, repeat after me, students. So where do you like to sleep? I enjoy sleeping in my king size bed at home in my king size. Not bad. It's not king size bad. It's king size bed. One more time. I enjoy sleeping in my king size bed at home, not only because it is quite large and I move around a lot while sleeping, but also because it is a very comfortable bed and my flat is quiet, so I get a good, night, good night's rest. Students, notice this not only, but also. I highly, highly recommend practicing this conjunction when you're able to express at least two points for your explanation. It's a really nice way to build fluency and complexity into your responses. So practice this not only, but also. Not only because of this, but also because of that, especially when it's easy to give multiple reasons. Clear? I hope that's clear. Okay. All right, let's keep going.
Next question. When do you go to bed? Why? Okay, now the examiner might not ask you why, only if you don't give the reason, but they'll definitely ask you this. When do you go to bed? So give me a nice full sentence answer for when do you go to bed? Dicey SPB says, well, usually I go to sleep roughly at 11 or 12 o'clock p.m. as I'm tired while improving my skills and nobody can disturb me. Dicey, not bad, just one correction. 11 p.m. is nighttime, 12 p.m. is noon. Students, remember, Dicey, remember this in your writing and in your speaking in English, that 12 p.m. is noon, okay, and 12 a.m. is midnight, okay? So you can't say 11 or 12 p.m. That's very confusing for an English speaker. They'll be like, huh, you go to bed at noon or at just before midnight? What's going on? So careful. Okay. Omar uh, Chaffee says, I usually go to bed around 10 p.m. on weekends. However, I go to bed uh, two or three hours later on weekends as I find lots of joy watching late night movies with my family while eating popcorn. Omar, repeat after me, watching late night movies with my family while eating popcorn. So watch your word order. In natural English, we actually say late night movies, okay? Late night movies is usually how we express that. Hi, Yen Yuen says, I usually have to cram for exams, so I hit the hay quite late, about 11.30 p.m. Mm -hmm. As I am both a full-time student and work part-time, I usually hit the hay late at around half past 11 and I fall asleep, deep asleep in a matter of seconds until my alarm clock wakes me up at 6 a.m. the next day. All right. Good. Thank you for sharing that answer, Hai Yen, and sharing that nice idiom with the rest of the viewers. So as I am both a full-time student and work part-time, I usually hit the hay. It's nice. It's a nice natural... Uh, idiomatic expression in uh, English. Uh, hit the hay means uh, to go to bed. Um, of course, uh, a long time ago, uh, many people used to sleep on hay. Some people still do. Um, hay is the uh, dry grass uh, that we feed to livestock like horses and cows and such as well. And we used to use it for bed stuffing as well. So this expression to hit the hay, just imagine this kind of a uh, ball or mound of hay and you just go, Poof! you're so tired that you just fall and you hit the hay. It's often used, okay? It's quite a popular uh, idiom, especially in North America, but I think in UK and uh, Australia as well. It means go to sleep. I usually hit the hay. So nice, thanks, Hi, Yen. Okay, next question, students. Let's keep going. What helps you to sleep better? Why? Okay, give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. So, what helps you sleep? What helps you to sleep better and why? Okay, so I can't read the Cyrillic, but our student is saying, actually, I'm very sensitive to 
airlessness. So the ideal condition for my sleeping is a place with lots of fresh air. Okay, I think a simpler way to say that where you could still get some really good band scores is actually I'm very sensitive to a stuffy room, to a stuffy room. When a room doesn't have air, we say it's stuffy. So the I ideal condition for me to sleep better is to have a window open where I can get some fresh air. Okay. Um, Luxme Karki says, well, that's an interesting question. I usually listen to music or an audio novel while sleeping because it really helps me uh, provide some positive vibes and I can be calm and at peace. Okay, Lux, be careful not to overcomplicate the end of that. All right. Rodrigo Duarte says, I think that my one hour workout three times a week and my everyday cool bath helps me sleep. Uh, while the first makes me tired enough to go to bed and tune out, the second one helps me to unwind before sleeping. Okay, good, Rodrigo. Um, remember your question and the answer, okay? So I think that my one hour workout three times a week and my everyday cool bath helps me to sleep. Remember students, use the question in your answer for clarity always. Elena Mori says, I usually do yoga for half an hour before I crawl into bed. Yoga helps uh, me to reduce restlessness and achieve deeper and refreshing sleep. Elena, nice. Uh, I do the same. I think yoga is excellent. Stretching out before bed about a half hour before is a fantastic way to get a more restful night of sleep. I agree. Harry Gaba says, I sleep better when I do some uh, good activities throughout the day. Uh, and when I make my family proud, I feel like I did something productive and uh, it helps me calm down and sleep better. Okay, Harry Gaba, careful with your use of capitalizations. Okay. So I find that doing just 20 minutes of yoga about half an hour before I go to bed really improves my overall quality of sleep and I wake up feeling fresh and relaxed for the next day. Okay. So students, uh, repeat after me. What helps you to sleep better? Why? I find that doing just 20 minutes of yoga about half an hour before I go to bed really improves my overall quality of sleep and I wake up feeling fresh and relaxed for the next day. All right, here we go. Some more questions for you for homework. How do you feel when you do not get enough sleep? Have you ever had difficulties sleeping? If yes, why? I will leave these last two questions for you to do for homework. You can record that on your phone, send it, email it to me by MP3 and I will gladly give you a score estimate, roughly where you are currently in your speaking, according to the IELTS band score descriptors. MP3 students, so if your phone's not recording MP3, just convert to MP3, send it to adrian at aehelp.com, and like I say, I will gladly score you for free and give you some more information about us. If you like this lesson, you want lots more, over 100 hours of video lessons, you can get those through the premium package on our website, aehelp.com, that's for academic. You can download, link the app, academic IELTS help, the website and the app, they link together. So you learn from the same account, okay? So if you buy it through the app, 
It's the same as buying it through the website. Um, and for general IELTS students, check us out at gielts.help.com. Again, students, these websites look like this. This is the general IELTS website at gielts.help.com or generalieltshelp.com. And aehelp.com looks like this, academicenglishhelp.com. That's also us. Click that big red button to join our premium packages there. Spend a couple dollars, save yourself some headache, lots of time and energy. Learn from effective materials. Students, that's it for today. I will be back tomorrow at the same time with some listening practice and strategy. And for members tomorrow, some task one academic writing. So task one academic writing first, then listening strategies with sample questions and answers. Much love to all of you. Have an awesome rest of your day from the heart of Europe, Budapest. Bye for now, everyone.